Welcome to Unlocking Science. Our goal is to glorify God by studying and unlocking the secrets of His amazing creation. I'm your host, Mr. P, and I'm joined today by Dr. Georgia Purdom, and she's here today to continue talking more about bacteria. Now, this seems to be your favorite subject. This is the third episode we've done on this issue. Yeah, we do. I do like to talk about bacteria. My specialty is actually genetics, but I find microbes fascinating, and that's actually where I've done a lot of my research um, since I finished my mm -hmm. PhD, so I like to talk about them. All right, so this is a spin-off, our hands-on episode coming off of our bacteria abounding episode. You can find all of the descriptions of what we're talking about today, the detailed instructions, a PDF download in the comment or in the in the description section down below this video. And you can also go back and watch that video, see some of the information we've shared. We talked a little bit about some interesting bacteria that mm -hmm. you're probably not going to grow. Things that could grow in areas of high salt, right. high radiation, high acid, high metal content even bacteria that eat gold and give it back to us. So some amazing things. So lots of interesting information in that bacteria abounding episode. So what you're talking about today has to do with the big science word we talked about, ubiquity. What right. does ubiquity mean? Ubiquity means basically everywhere. Okay, so we say bacteria are everywhere or bacteria are ubiquitous, which means they're like on every surface, in the air that you breathe, on your skin, inside you, all of those things. Yeah, that was an interesting question we got on the first episode we mm -hmm. did. You mean bacteria are even in the air that we breathe? Yes. Yes, you can't see them floating around, but mm -hmm. they're there. They sure. are there. They're on your skin, in your hair. They're actually inside they're of inside. you. They live inside mm -hmm. of your guts, lots of different places. And we're going to talk about how we can identify some of those bacteria around the home, where we might find mm -hmm. them, and maybe some precautions and things we can use to protect against the bad bacteria, right. but still keep the good bacteria around. Right, and I think it's, this is a really neat experiment. I've done this many times with kids, even my own daughter, who's not really into science, but she loves doing this <laughs> because there's this whole unseen world around us. And this is a way for us to visualize that a little bit and to be able to see that. And so what's really cool is that you can actually do this with stuff around that you probably have around the house or can buy easily in the grocery store. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I love about this experiment. So what I did in that experiment was I showed you um, plates. These are typical Petri plates is what we call these Petri dishes. And I used a type of, um, it's, this is called LB auger for Luria broth auger. So this has auger as a solidifying substance um, and it has nutrients in it that allow the bacteria to grow. Yeah. Now, these might not be things that you have around the house though. Probably right? not. You, now this, this auger is actually type, it's basically jello made from seaweed. Is pretty much, think yeah, about pretty it. much, yeah. Bacteria cannot digest auger, and mm -hmm. so that's what makes this a good solid substrate to grow them on because they can't, they can't break it down. So they'll be on the surface of the auger. Um, you can also use things like, um, these are sterile swabs, okay? So they're individually packaged, and so uh, if, all of these things are available on um, certain websites, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, like from science supply companies or even more common websites like Amazon, where you could get these types of things if you really wanted to do this more like you would see in a lab, so to speak. You could do that. Yep. But, okay. Let's do it simple around the But house we're not gonna do that today, okay? We're gonna do this simply. So one of the things that you can do to make your own, and you'll see this in the PDF that's mm -hmm. in the, um, it's in the- In the description. In level. the description. Mm -hmm. You'll see a PDF that shows you how a formula or a recipe basically for making this type of broth, something very similar to it. And so, um, but instead of making it with auger, you're actually gonna be making it with gelatin, okay? So gelatin is that solidifying substance. This is unflavored gelatin. You want the unflavored kind. Um, and some, now some bacteria do digest gelatin, which is why, you know, we don't use it in the lab, but you should be okay for these types of experiments to use that. The nutrients in it are going to be twofold. You're going to get some beef bouillon, okay? It can be granules or it can be cubes, and you're going to have some sugar, okay? So those are the things that the bacteria need to eat to be able to grow on the surface yep. of So the they're, they're not going to be metabolizing the auger or the mm. gelatin. They're metabolizing right. the stuff that's in right. them, mm -hmm. and they can draw mm -hmm. that out of the, out of the gelatin. Matrix. Right, mm -hmm. right. So, um, so obviously you won't have Petri plates, but pretty much everybody has muffin cups, okay? Muffin cup liners, and you need to get the foil kind, okay? So get the foil kind, and what you can do is you can actually put this in a, a muffin tin like this, 
And I poured these this morning. It sets up really quick um, with the auger, at least. With the gelatin, again, it's going to be It'll pretty quick. It'll take a quick. little while. You might have to Yeah, you could put fridge. it in the fridge if you mm -hmm. wanted it to go faster. But what I did was I poured. It doesn't have to go all the way up. Do not fill it all the way up, okay? You just need a little bit in the bottom, you know, maybe half an inch or so or a quarter inch so that the bacteria can grow on that. So those are, that's a really inexpensive, easy way to do that. So once you've put all of your ingredients together and you have to boil it and there's different things you have to do to it, okay, um, to make it. So an adult will have to help with that part. And then you pour it in here and you want to make sure it's solid before you use it. Now, part of that boiling process is going to be killing any right. of the bacteria or things that are in there already mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that would be present in the gelatin potentially and could right. grow. So we want to, that's kind of a sterilization right. process yeah. up front. That's what we do in the lab now we would, if you leave these in the kitchen don't let anybody eat them your don't dad eat them. might come in and think it's dessert so <laughs> and not that it would that. hurt you but no, it would taste not. really gross so it wouldn't hurt you but it would be gross at least at this point later on it could hurt you so you don't want to do that so then what you want to do is you want to take um the uh, thing and you can do now you could do a bunch of these and just swab on each individual one mm -hmm. but to make more of it what you can do is you can like turn it over and you can take a Sharpie and divide it into four quadrants, okay? And then you label what each quadrant is, wherever you're going to swab in your home. And then on the other side of the muffin cup where the auger is, you can take a toothpick, a clean toothpick, and you can draw across it and again make it into four different parts, okay? So that you can then swab. You may not be able to see that real well. We have pictures provided in the PDF so that you can see and you can swab just those little tiny areas. Yeah, and then you'll be able to see if there's anything growing and have those divided right. sections. You may also, I was thinking about this just a second ago, you may be able to kind of fold the liner back mm -hmm. and mark some marks yep, you along can do it there. That way so too. There, there are different ways you're going to yep. accomplish this. Mm -hmm. So then you want to get, and I would recommend a clean box, an unopened box of cotton swabs for this, okay? So not one that I've used in my ear already. <laughs> But that could be a potential place to Well, it could be cool. Yeah. yeah. You so can do that. So you could swab your ear and see how many bacteria yeah. are growing inside right. your ear. So get some clean cotton swabs and open them up and then just go around to different parts of your home, like doorknobs, mm -hmm. fridge handles, things that you think about that you touch and maybe even some things that you might not think about, um, you know, that aren't typically high contact areas. And then you swab those onto the surface of your um uh, auger plate here so to speak mm -hmm. and then you want now what now after you do that what I want you to do okay you're either gonna have to put them back in the muffin tin and put a big bag around them okay or you can put them in the ziploc bag like this but don't zip it all the way okay because these bacteria need oxygen to grow so we don't want to annihilate so you just zip it most of the way and just leave a little space there for them to basically get air. Now, if we don't, the gelatin could dry out and crack, and yeah. we might, and we could also get contamination. Right, around. we're so trying, we're to, trying avoid to avoid that. Contaminating other areas. Yeah. So if we go and we swab the toilet seat, <laughs> and we yeah. got this on this plate, we don't necessarily want that open no. in the fridge. You know. I think your mom would probably frown right. on that. Right, so. or where? Because initially you're going to leave these at room temperature somewhere. So you want to put them in an area that animals and kids and nobody really has access to. I put them in a, like, even though my daughter's a teenager, okay, <laughs> but I do have a dog. So I put them in a cabinet, like a high kitchen cabinet, um, and I still had them in the bags and everything and just put them inside of that cabinet. Sure, on the top of the fridge. On or top if you've of the got fridge. a spot out in the garage, mm -hmm. it's a shelf you could um, stick them on. As long as it's not too cold. If it's in the wintertime, time. Yeah, you don't want to do this. Work. Yeah, <laughs> Make sure summertime it's not cold. Summertime would work well. Yeah, mm -hmm. summertime works really well for that. So you just want to make sure you keep them in the bag. Like these have a, have a lid, so I don't have to worry about yeah. that quite so much. But even mm -hmm. then, I still kept them in a bag. Um, so you put them in the bag and what, what I want you to do is check for growth after 24 hours, after 48 hours, and after 72 hours. So that's one, two, and three days. Mm -hmm. um, and see what grows, okay? Now, there's a data table there in the yeah. PDF, and you're gonna be good scientists and make good mm -hmm. observations. So you're gonna be counting colonies. colonies. Mm -hmm. So a colony is anytime you see a little dot show up in there, that's probably one single bacteria right. that grew into this colony of mm -hmm. billions of little bacteria. Right, right. Mm -hmm. that you can visualize and that you can see. If you have a microscope at home, you could even put it under the microscope, as long as you have it up high enough, um, you could put it under the microscope and even look at it. But whatever you do, okay, as far as safety goes, 
okay, number one, do not eat this <laughs> after you grow things after on it. After you've grown things. This number is... two, do not put your hand on it after you grow things on it, or even while you're doing this. Don't let, because there's bacteria here, okay? So you only want the cookie tip. Don't touch it. Um, as much as possible, I would keep it in the bag. Um, unless you're going to put it under a microscope, you're going to have to take it out. But yeah. don't touch it. Don't eat it. Um, and these, once you make these, you can put them in the fridge if you're not going to use them right away for probably, I'd say no more than about two to three days, mm -hmm. uh, maybe, but then you need to use them. And, you know, mom probably doesn't want bacteria, like, you know, things like this yeah, growing everywhere. Probably. So. And if you were going to look at it under the microscope, you could take a toothpick or something mm -hmm. and just take a single scoop Col out of one yep. of those colonies and smear it on your slide. On a slide. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've got a stain kit. Mm -hmm. Maybe you've got a gram negative, yeah. gram positive type of stain kit that came with your slides and your or even microscope. methylene blue is yep, another methylene. really common one that people see that yep. you can use for that too and that'll let you visualize some mm -hmm. of those things mm -hmm. that's that's the really fun part. all right so you guys are going to be exploring your house sampling all of these things and then are you going to yeah so now? what yeah. i was going to say was so uh, after you go around and swab everything do preferably do this at the same time okay so you swab everything then i want you to take some sort of cleaner it doesn't have to be this one but this one states um, that it kills 99.9% .9 of viruses and bacteria. Okay, now. So we want an antibacterial bacterial cleaner. cleaner. Okay. Right. So you go around and you clean those same spots that you just swabbed. Then wait 15 minutes. Okay, let it dry, let it mm. do its thing, so to speak. It's not instantaneous, typically. Then I want you to swab them again. All right, and do you swab them onto new plates, okay, new yeah. muffin cup thing. And I want you to see if you see differences, right? I did when I did my experiment that we talked about in the episode, I definitely saw a lot of differences, especially the dog food bowl. Um, there was a lot of differences after cleaning it. There were no bacterial colonies anymore, which is good. That's what you want. That's kind of the point of cleaning, um, especially those high germy areas, so to speak. So, so, and then you can compare them and contrast them and make sure you do a control. Okay. I've made, made some very specific things about that um, because you always want to know if what you're using, like the cotton swabs or whatever, you want to make sure it's not contaminated and that's what's causing you to see colonies. Yeah, so if we saw the same types of orange colonies show up in our control as mm -hmm. in all the rest of them, we'd suspect that there was something on the swab that right. had contaminated it. Right. So that's the advantage of using something like a sterile swab that comes in a package. Mm -hmm. So if you were doing this in a laboratory mm -hmm. setting mm -hmm. and actually trying to get scientific, high quality, reportable results, mm -hmm. would you be using Q-tips and muffin cups? And no, no. <laughs> I would be using um, Petri dishes like this, preferably in a, a, sleeve, that, a sleeve of them. They come in like a big pack mm -hmm. that hasn't been opened. Uh, the media is usually put in an autoclave to make yep. the media and that um, that sterilizes it. Okay, we don't boil it in a pot in the, yes. in the um, lab. We because would put that's it, still open to the air. Right, an exactly. An autoclave is sealed off. It's, it's sealed off and we put it in there and it would, it stinks to high heaven. And um, and so even in here, I've been doing it in the microwave and yes. it stinks. So, uh, so we would do that in the autoclave, big, big like sterilizing machine basically. And then I would pour it, pour the plate and and even then though, when I'm pouring it, okay, I would have to make sure that I had some sort of flame source. Yeah, some type of heat source, mm -hmm. like a burner or right. something. Right, I would flame the neck of whatever it is I'm trying to pour from, the flask mm -hmm. or whatever. And then I would pour it directly into here. And even, even in between each pour, I would probably flame it. You know, you want, I don't want any contamination from anything. Yeah, um, so we'd even use things like alcohol around the rim yes. and then you burn the alcohol mm -hmm. off so mm -hmm. that it will kill any of the bacteria that are right. there as well. Right. Uh, there are different types of ammonium compounds that mm -hmm. we use to clean surfaces and things. Yeah. If you're using inoculating loops or things that are made out yes. of wire, you heat that wire up till it's glowing red glowing hot. Red. So mm -hmm. you know you've killed all the bacteria. So we would take extra sterilization steps if we were right. doing this in a laboratory environment but you can do that by using a fresh box of yeah of the there are things and you trying can to do keep as things as clean mm -hmm. and neat as you're working i mean i was pretty sick i mean i'm doing this here without an autoclave yes. um, now i do have a microwave and i have media that's already made mm -hmm. but um still i used cotton swabs for mine i didn't use sterile um, swabs and you can get pretty good yeah. results that way you know it, it's not actually that bad so okay so now they're going to grow this stuff on these plates they're mm -hmm. going to find that there are these bacteria growing everywhere mm -hmm. is that something to be freaked out about no 
that's a good thing actually. And you want, like we said before, you want those bacteria to grow because um, they're normal, they're natural. It's the way that God designed things to be. And they, they keep the bad ones at bay, shall we say. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when people take, for example, antibiotics, which is to kill the bad bacteria, sometimes people will get like diarrhea. And mm -hmm. the reason for that is because not only do you kill the bad bacteria, a lot of times you kill the good bacteria too that are in your gut. And that can lead to diarrhea and things like that. So. That's there for a reason. They're there for a purpose. <laughs> and that's what we found a function of the appendixes, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. is to repopulate some of those gut bacteria right. after we've had an illness or taking the medications right. that would kill them off. Right, mm -hmm. yeah. So you want those things. Now, I wouldn't recommend, um, you know, don't don't culture things, shall we say, that come from... Um, you know, your digestive system. Yeah. That no come human out. waste. No human waste, point. no dog waste. Mm -hmm. Don't, please don't do that. Okay. Because, because there can be can dangerous things there. Things in, yeah. So please, you can do your mouth, you know, if you mm -hmm. want or whatever, but, but keep away from those types of things because we don't want to grow anything dangerous. And, yeah. and if you keep it in the bag too, that helps um, deal with that situation, yeah. so to speak. So, all right. So we hope you will download this PDF and check out this experiment, this activity make good observations, mm -hmm. record your data. There are discussion questions there that you can think through and, and analyze a little bit. And you'll find bacteria are truly everywhere, mm -hmm. but it's not something to be freaked about. It's something we can be thankful for God for, to provide those different defense things for us. Yeah, and we wanna to talk to you just briefly about our high school labs that we have coming up here at the Creation Museum this fall. Um, so we offer these for um, homeschool students who need to complete uh, the, just the lab portion here. Uh, so it's 12 four-hour sessions throughout the year in biology, chemistry, and forensic science. And so Doc, Mr. P here is the teacher for chemistry, and Dr. Jennifer Rivera will be teaching biology and forensic science. And she is a forensic scientist, so um, expert um, instruction, uh, professionals doing this, right, here, which is here nice in this lab. here in this lab. Yeah, we've got all the great equipment for you to use and I love teaching those mm -hmm. things, helping kids see amazing things happen in test tubes and right. fire and flames and things blowing up every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's the one we worry about. And, and you want science, science is collaborative. So this mm -hmm. allows, um, I know my daughter is an only child, but this allows her to interact in an environment. And that's how science works. That's how we do science. And so you can go online. We'll make sure to put a link in there um, where you can register for the labs um, for next year. So be sure to do that soon because they are starting to fill up. Mm -hmm. And we'd love to see you here. All right. Thank you. And we truly hope you enjoy this experiment. Get your hands on the things that God has created and try and understand them more. And until we see you next time, get out and explore God's amazing creation.